welcome to this edition of Alvin Home, which concentrates mainly on the conversion of a Metcalf engine shed into uh, a train shed and the creation of the station for High Elven. Uh, I've also inserted a section at the request of a subscriber beginning to look at my tools and I'll be interested in your uh, reaction to a question that I pose in that section. So let's uh, get on to um, where I think I left off at the last episode uh, on the start of the process of creating the station for High Elven. Well, this is where I left uh, you at the last, at the end of the last video with the uh, station building completed, adapting that from the workshop kit that comes as part of the Metcalf engine shed kits. The platform, which had been slightly adapted already, the, the, the cutout section on which the original station building was going to sit um, has been removed because this now is going to go inside the train shed. So if I take this out the way, I've started work on building the train shed. Let me take it to this side. Uh, this is a new kit. I, th I think they're in the process of updating the red brick kit to bring it into line more with this, I think. Um, I built it to the point that I said I would build it, where I'm starting to think about adaptations and also putting in the lights. Um, let me show you what changes I've made. That is how the kit should look, looking side on. Uh, and this is the wall that will face, um, the, face you when you're looking at the layout. So I've left that with all the windows because I want people to be able to see in once it's lit. On the other side, however, I've made a couple of changes, uh, very small ones at the moment, uh, which is, uh, in fact, one change, but three times. Um, instead of each of these having the windows inserted in them, uh, I've put brick. Now, I've put brick on both sides, the way, leaving one open, which, by wonderful coincidence, is exactly the right height for the platform, or more or less. I think what I will do is build a little step that goes over the top of that to hide that and to bind the two things together. The next thing for me to do was to fit the platform. In the last video, I thought I might have a platform at right angles, let me bring this into shot, a platform at right angles here. Um, but in fact, I don't think I need that. Looking at Wick and Thurso and other train sheds, they don't always come into a, a platform edge there. So what I will do instead uh, and I've already done the cutout, is that the platform sits nice and snugly, as you can see. Uh, that will sit in there uh, to give me my the basis of my engine shed. And obviously the building will I'll line the door up. This has been um, done so that the covered ones are all within the side of the building, leaving a window at either end. Uh, what I'm going to do now is think about fitting the lights. Uh, I've used the lights from um, Layouts for You, which I've used before, if I just show you these here, uh, which I've used them on the station to provide light in between the bays on the main Weathertop station, as some of you have been around for a while. I had in my spares um, packet of offcuts of um, various types of strip styrene, some very thin, um, let's see if I can bring this into focus, uh, rod, strip styrene rod, that's throwing the focus a bit, there we go, uh, which is just right for the very thin wires that come off this. So what that's going to do is, if I bring the model up here, I will attach the these as down pipes, and that will then allow me to string the light so that it hangs down from one of the rafters and uh, there'll be three of those. This juts out just a little bit from below um, so that the this will help position this on the layout. I'll obviously drill three holes through the board and that I think is just about the depth of the baseboard so that will help position this firmly on the layout so it doesn't get doesn't get biffed. Uh, once I've done that I'll start thinking about the decoration I'll need to have a look in my, um, I've still got some uh, stickers of posters and timetables left over from when I did the other stations. I don't know whether I've got enough. Uh, and also I'll need to mount a wall, if I just put this back in focus, uh, at this end of the, the layout. So I'm going to go away and carry on doing the building. 
and I will come back before I put the roof on because it will be easier to see what's going on inside. Well, as promised, I've uh, come back before I start work on the roof. Uh, I've been enjoying myself uh, gently titivating <laughs> this engine shed. Um, let's start on this side. There's not much to see on this side. This is mounted on uh, temporarily on this white uh, foam because, uh, as I'll show you in a moment, the, there's, there's three pieces of plastic acting as downpipes, which will also act as the locators into the baseboard. Uh, and there are wires coming out from underneath, and I just wanted to protect all that. If I left it off, I could see them all getting uh, bent. So uh, on this side, the only real change you can see to this side at the moment is the addition of the coins on the corner. Um, I just think they make a better look than the ones that are printed on by Metcalf, and they do get over the possibility of the white uh, gap. Uh, coming to the front, you can see that High Elven now has its water crane for the um, tank engine, uh, and that is positioned so that that will drop over the uh, comfortably over the water. Not that it moves, of course. Uh, once again, the scale model scenery uh, running in boards, which are custom made. So obviously, you decide what name you want for your station. Um, they're a little fiddly to do at Engage because they come in four parts essentially. There's a backboard, there's the main board, and then there is a border. If I bring this up to the camera, I don't know whether I can show you without it going out of focus. No, you can't really see there. I'll show you on the one on the end. Uh, and then you have each letter individually uh, provided. The middle board uh, has in relief, uh, high relief, the letters of the name, and you stick each letter on top of the corresponding letter on the backboard. Um, turning to look into the station now for the first time, uh, the stickers that I put on were I got from Trackside Stickers, I think they are called. Uh, I'll put a link down below to the uh, companies that I'm mentioning now in case you want to get any of these things. Um, it is Trackside Signs, uh, who also uh, are able to do customised names for running in boards or station signs. And as you'll see, High Elven is there. The remnant of the London North uh, Eastern Railway sign is still here at High Elven. B British Rail hasn't got round to doing much about that. Uh, looking now down into the station, uh, you'll see that there are various boards that have gone in. Um, those are nothing more. In fact, I've got one which I did recently. Um, it's nothing more than this grey card. This is a thinner piece than I've used for the boards in there. Um, but it, it works a treat. Just colour it up black. Um, that's black paint, but equally black felt pen I've used in the past. Um, and at Engage, they really work a treat. So one of the running in boards is there. I don't know if I can get a closer view here. Will it? Will it? Will it? It will. You may just be able to pick up that the very thin border that goes around the letters of High Elven, which is the front piece. High Elven is then, the letters are stuck onto the raised section in the middle, and then there's a backboard that gives you a nice, uh, if I turn it down, you'll see it's quite a nice thick board. With that one, I've just cut the legs off so that I can um, mount it on the end of the station. Uh, and that's got uh, some adverts and things put in as well. So High Elven station has been brought to the point that I said it would which now just leaves me the uh, roof to deal with. The roof, uh, generally speaking, is really good. It's a, it's, there's, a, there's an underpiece here, uh, the grey card former, which has four pieces here that help locate it correctly. So no trying to guess whereabout it goes. And then the Metcalf uh, roof goes on top. Uh, and then, let's make sure we keep it in focus. And then the thing which I thought actually let this kit down a little bit because I'm, I'm really impressed with this kit, but I am not impressed with these windows. Um, the idea is that you stick the window on here uh, with the glass at, running on the edge. This is not focusing for some strange, there we go. Uh, and then you put this piece of card sits over the top, uh, sort of like that. Uh, and it just looks naff to me. Uh, also, it's very odd, I can't imagine anywhere where 
you would put windows in on uh, this size and the bottom edge was essentially open glass. Uh, that does, doesn't make any sense to me. So uh, I have decided to do something different. What, I'm, what I've done is create four window frames which are going to sit over the top of the windows like so. Uh, I will put some glass underneath. I think I'm going to use clear plastic. I don't think I'm going to use the Metcalf um, ones. And then I will put some cross members in between to provide the break of the, of the panes. The roof also um, has one other thing about the, the Metcalf kits that I'm quite happy with the roofs, generally speaking. Um, but they can get a bit samey. And I've looked at a product from York Model Rail uh, for a while, which is uh, to provide a, a more textured roofing for, uh, for slates of various kinds. And I've, I'm going to try it out. In fact, I have already tried it out. If I show you this, this is very, very thin, as you can see, and it's got, it's got a, a sticky back. And these are essentially rows of tiles which you apply to the roof uh, overlapping and that will give you uh, more of a look of a, of a tiled roof. I've tried once before using various types of card, uh, plastic card. The only problem that I found is that when you're trying to overlap the uh, plastic card, although the scale of the individual slates will be N-gauge, the plastic card is a pretty constant thickness for all the different types of scale of image that it's, it's embossing on the card. And you've got to remember that at N gauge, half a millimeter equals three inches in the real world. And I don't know many roofs that have three inch thick slates, um, individual slates put on them. One can only boggle at the weight that the roof would have to take if each one of these was three inches thick. If I turn the roof round, and you'll get an idea then of the difference that it makes, which I think is absolutely stunning. Um, it's gone a bit wobbly here because I ran into a tiny, tiny problem, but fortunately it is a tiny problem, most of which will be under the, um, uh, the window frame. Um, as it goes up, it gets much better, as my skill using this uh, is better too. I'm now going to get on with completing the roof and completing the station because I want to get this finished uh, and then I'll just come back once it's all finished so you can see what it looks like. So I'll go away and get all this finished and I'll show you the completed building in a bit. In response to my last video, Chris Painter uh, left me a comment saying I would appreciate it if you could remind us what tools you use for scratch building. In particular, whether or not you use a razor saw to cut coffee stirrers, for instance. Uh, and I thought, yes, and I said to him, I'd happily include a section on the tools that I use for uh, scratch building. I've recorded it already. Uh, it ran at 15 minutes and I really hadn't got halfway through. Um, that's either because <laughs> I like to talk, which is not untrue. Uh, but also because I use quite a lot of tools one way or another. So what I'm going to do is deal specifically with the saws that I use because that deals with the thing that Chris was particularly interested in. If you think it would be useful to see um, the tools that I use, what I might well do is a mini series of uh, short sections and this I'm hoping to keep to about three or four minutes. Uh, just talking through the individual tools I use for scratch building specifically. I have, as you might expect, a wide range of tools of rasps and files, um, saws that, you know, that you would normally have around. But over time, you do begin to acquire things that are specifically aimed towards the work you'll be doing, scratch building and scratch building at N-Gage. Then not, none of them are unusual, I don't think, or very few of them are unusual. Um, but it is just passing on the things that I've acquired over the last four years since I came back to the hobby. So this has already run at two minutes and I haven't even started talking about what's in front. Um, in terms of cutting, the things that I use for cutting card or strip styrene, uh, these are the main weapons of choice. The obvious one uh, is my knife, uh, which uses surgical blades. Um, 
those you need to have lots of surgical blades you'll get through loads of them because they go blunt quite quickly um, and uh, card particularly card will rip uh, very quickly if the blade isn't sharp enough but the blades are not expensive although it's getting harder to get those you I don't think you can get them posted through the Royal Mail so Amazon is uh, the main place you'll get them unless you can go into a shop to purchase them plenty of suppliers of those this is a standard knife which uses standard um, surgical blades that just slot in um, that is probably used for about 80 to 90 percent of the cutting that I'm doing uh, this kind of razor saw there's many brands out on the market it's a, a kind of multi-purpose handle uh, so the saw comes away and you can buy the saws uh, of different thicknesses uh, and size uh, very useful for cutting uh, strip styrene larger pieces of strip styrene uh, and I have a mitre block which was a 3d printed mitre block a quite small one which I can't quite see let me see if I can get it just there we go this I think I got from PD models up in Orkney which is a little 3d mitre block um, again vital for being able to cut accurate angles uh, this kind of small hacksaw is actually quite useful it, it will deal with wood as, as much as anything else uh, and so that's been pressed into use on occasion with pieces of strip styrene uh, as well the main thing that I now use for the smaller pieces of strip styrene uh, and you will see um, depending where I put this in the video um, that the window frames that were made for the station were made using this uh, piece of kit which is a razor saw um, I will put a link in the description below of the company from which I bought this this is a Czech company I think that makes it and there is a I can't remember now who the distributor is in the UK uh, but this is an excellent piece of kit it's essentially that's a razor blade with a serrated edge uh, and I bought at the same time the mitre block that goes with it which allows you to do cuts of 90 degrees 45 degrees or 60 degrees but the thing that I really wanted it for was this stop depth gauge essentially um, which means for cutting quite small pieces uh, this is invaluable uh, and has was uh, extremely useful again for cutting the pieces that I needed for the window frames for the uh, station and in particular all the window frames that were cut for uh, the hotel uh, on which there were can't remember about 40 window frames that needed cutting uh, without this I would have had real trouble being able to get accurate angles the beauty of this thing is that you you get in the kit that I got um, these spacers of varying depths so that you can if you wish put mount two blades on here uh, and then cut two parallel lines um, which I could see various uses if particularly if you were looking to do a bit of um, essentially a tenon joint of some description that would allow you to to do some of the cutting to be able to get to start cutting the, the nature of the of the joint uh, very pleased with this thing use it a lot and uh, it's vital for cutting small bits of strip styrene so those are the main uh, saws and cutting materials that I, I use as I say if you think you would like me to go through the other tools that I use and none of them are, are extraordinary um, I'm more than happy to do that but I don't want to record uh, a long diatribe on various tools that I own only for it to bore you witless so with that let's get back to the build of the station well here I am now with the 99.9% .9 finished model the only thing that's uh, that I'm waiting on as a kit is some fire buckets to go uh, in which you would have seen in the station of this time you'll see um, if I tip it up slightly and hope nothing falls off uh, there are various machines that have gone in um, one of which only arrived this morning um, the PD models for the scales uh, the little um, luggage and the um, ticket machine which is this thing that's that's here the other kits the trolleys are from a flat brass etch kit which you just fold into shape and then paint and I've had that for a good long while so I've put them to good use you'll see that I'd forgotten I had various figures from a present that I had a while ago and these are Backman figures or Graham Farish figures um, 
which they've painted and the quality of the painting is superb it's not surprising they're quite expensive to buy uh, the I think you saw the benches were in last time the notice boards were in last time but the main thing that we are here to look at of course is the roof so if I bring you back out uh, and position this I've now completed the work on the roof uh, and if I put it into place, I think I'm just going to leave the roof so that it comes off because um, if I need to replace the lights, it'll be easier to work with the roof coming off and it sits quite happily down there. You'll see that I did go in the end with putting um, a roof vent on uh, and I had a few pieces left over when I built the town hall, which was a Fala kit. One of the sprues was obviously a very generic sprue with bits on it that you didn't need for that uh, for the town hall kit so that's provided me with the railing and and uh, uh, finials that uh, that sit right on top and I'm I'm very pleased with the uh, new tiles uh, my skill in putting them on still needs to increase um, they are they are quite a challenge and I was silly in a way to go for such a large area as the first thing I tried to do uh, and also with the cutouts in there, it makes it a much more challenging thing to use. It was much easier if I come round to the other side um, to do uh, this thing here. Uh, not surprisingly, because it's just one simple piece of card, but that would have been a much better learning experience than trying to do all of these. Uh, and another learning thing is that I think next time when I use it, I will use a narrower uh, part of the uh, of a ruler that you can get, a plastic ruler that helps you draw the lines across, which give you your guidelines for putting on the uh, tiles. There is a really good video on York uh, Model Railways um, website, which I'll put a link to uh, here if I can, that shows you them using both the ruler and applying these. I think using their O gauge version, which I suspect will be a much easier task than working in N gauge. But I'm really very, very pleased with the roof. I, I think it's much better. It could be better still. I readily accept that. Um, but it's much better than the Metcalf one would have been. Uh, and I've, I will do some weathering over the top, which I think will disguise. And to the extent that the tiles are not absolutely uniform, uh, or are, um, that does suggest tiles that may have come loose. But I, uh, they do these tiles in various shades as well. I went for the graphite and my, my light has just gone out. But never mind, we will press on in the darkness. The only other thing I wanted to show you, which was a P and D Marsh kit, uh, was the newspaper stand, which you may remember, I think I said I wanted to do. This is a, a white metal kit that comes in five parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, because there's a door. Um, I used a two-part epoxy resin to get it to stick together and it took its time over sticking together uh, and then painted it a kind of LMER green. More of the stickers that I had knocking around. The WH Smith sign is made using good old Excel. It's amazing what you can do with Excel. The newspapers at the front, I managed to find a 1948 picture of a WH Smith stand. It was black and white, unfortunately. Um, so I copied just the bit of it that I needed, which had the newspapers on there, and then lined round them in black to give a, a separation. Um, and then the other bits are remnants of Metcalf kits. And this is going to stand outside the station, which is why it's sort of vaguely positioned here, as a news vendor on the entry to the station, because it's, it's simply too big for the platform. And actually it's a bit grand for just a, a sort of branch station. But that is essentially the news vendor for the village of High Elven. So people can come and get their newspapers and what have you, but also for those traveling on the train. So that pretty much now completes the work on this. The only thing of course, is that the lights have not gone on and I won't be able to do that until I have this mounted in the layout. So we will all get to see what it looks like lit up uh, once uh, it gets on the layout. But that completes this work. Uh, and as I said, I'm rather pleased with it. I think it, uh, it looks rather good. Once I can get a new train cam, I'm going to enjoy taking the train cam into that station with all the way that the platform has been dressed. 
So I'll leave this section here and we'll move on to the next section of the video. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and the work that I've been doing, taking a kit that's meant for one thing and turning it into something else. Uh, as you see, there's nothing particularly special. I had various bits not put, uh, sitting around and I bought particular bits. Um, but I'm hopeful in the next uh, couple of weeks to actually start work on laying out the track for High Elven. Uh, because I've got some cork that's on its way to me because I'm going to cork the top I've decided uh, and I'm also dead keen to see the station in its place with its lights on uh, but I won't try to do that until I've got it in place and it all wired up underneath. Um, please do let me have any comments you've got particularly if you're interested in me showing you the tools that I use for scratch building. They're nothing special but for those of you thinking you might give scratch building a go it might be useful to see what sorts of things you'll find helpful uh, to have around. Um, hope to be able to show you a new gimbal in the next episode as well. It arrived this week and I'm still getting used to it and explaining why I've made the change from the gimbal that I've been using up until now. Um, as I say, if you've got any comments, please do leave them in the box below. I really enjoy getting the comments. If you've liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. That's always very useful. And if you haven't subscribed already, well, please do subscribe and hit the bell notification to let you know when I'm uploading. It'd be great to have you along and welcome to all of the new subscribers that have joined me since the last video. So until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, that's bye-bye from me. Bye-bye.